uh, Hyde Park to carry on uh, facts and sport. Uh, education. Um, Summarising education in the primary school uh, area, you know, all it was for the teacher who has had to be decent at teaching all sort of areas. Uh, PE side of things, my experience was going outside doing the basic and basic of literally sports, like throwing a hoop into a basketball. Uh, when I went to secondary school, you know, it was more of a qualified PE teacher who knew what he was talking about, who knew what to do, what to say, and how to improve me as a basketball player or a cricketer or football or etc etc. Um, basically um, the government want to save money with primary school teachers instead of, instead of employing a, a second uh, primary school teacher who's got a qualification in PE, they want to make teachers who can do all around skills teach history, maths, PE etc. However in secondary school teachers you know, it's more of a central, someone who's got the qualifications to teach kids because it's not just about the year seven you know, throwback lessons, it's about teaching them in sport in the classroom as well. My opinion is that you know, I'm quite happy with this because not everyone wants to learn about you know, how to throw a basketball in year three and four. Um, next is child protection. Child protection is the policies uh, provided for safety children in and around sports activities. Adults who work with children need to have safety procedures in order for them to be allowed to work with children. Examples, CVRB checks, criminal records, national insurance, proof of identity, and fundamental, uh, these are fundamental needs which are, which are needed for a coach to be liable to teach kids. In 2008, the government announced a new strategy to promote safety, health and progress. Uh, they passed a um, new blueprint for the world, children and young people, um, basically to improve you know, child protection and making adults more safer to work with kids, really. My opinion on this is basically, it's a procedure which has improved methods of adults teaching kids uh, sports, all that sort of stuff. All, all coaches need it, like some of the coaches, academy coaches, etc, etc. Um, religion and culture, they're both pros and cons in uh, football. In England, there's a whole range of religions and backgrounds and cultures. The pros of it, people can unite from all ethnic backgrounds, especially in the football, where there are Sikh leagues. Um, kind of brings the Sikh uh, religion and culture together to play football. Uh, also, there's like Polish football teams, pub football teams, there's all sorts of teams that can men's really unite, play together. Uh, football is a game all about uniting as well, so uh, the, the, the cons of it really is with the basis of, you know, name calling actions abuse, you know, that can happen in religion and culture, you know, the, the, you might have a set of people, you know, who's going to be racist because they're losing the game or it's a bad tackle going off, you know. Um, some projects are run, you know, like Sikh leagues, to play with each other. You know, that's a quick uh, example. However, uh, not a football team in Nottingham is Car Caribbean Cavaliers. They're uh, a football team from all different ethnic backgrounds who compete against, you know, show and FC, all that sort of stuff. Um, you know, so it's just like a team that unites people from all different areas just to come in and play, you know, and uh, the area is in a quite ethnic background sort of thing. Uh, my opinion is, I think it's great how people from all religions and cultures can actually have an access into f sport through, you know what I mean, you know, Sikh, you know, may play with all Sikh friends uh, in a Sikh league, you know, and it kind of brings them more confidence, kind of makes them feel more involved. Um, I think it's great, but on the other hand, it's my opinion on there is there's going to be racism in there. And no matter where you are in the country, no matter where you are in the world, there is going to be racism. And in sport, you know, I mean, racism can have a massive effect. Um, commercial and globalisation. Commercial and globalisation in the sport is a uh, promotion and exposure of team called competition. Uh, basically, it's money in sport. <coughs> um, a player can promote stuff, uh, competitions, sporting events. Teams go and play pre season cups in America to promote football in America because in America's got a lot of money. So, you've got teams in the summer of 2014, like Liverpool, like United, like Real Madrid, like uh, AC Milan, going out there to play football in America, against one another, making fans go to games and thinking more about football, um, playing in it. Um, also, if you could zoom in here, if you zoom in here, uh, World Cup star, James Rodriguez, 60 million quid, Real Madrid, you know, promotion for football, in for him, for the club, more shirt sales, it's like a domino effect, it's all about the money in the game, summarising what my opinion is, 
promoting sport's great, you know, because you've got your big teams going out to America where America's got a lot of potential for football. They've got a league with new teams entering each year. They've got a lot of money. You know, uh, football in America is going to take off. You've got players like David Beckham, who made the first one of the movies out there, one of the biggest players in Europe, to go and play in America. Now you've got players like Thierry Henry, and then you've got, you know, also like Bobby Keane, you know, your legends like him. <coughs> and um, also competitions are being more like, you know, you're for Champions League, you're in all European teams, the best ones together to play football and compete, that's who's the best. Uh, thank you. Uh, that's my presentation done. Goodbye. <laughs>